Welcome everybody to the fifth Chinese Knowledge Seekers Workshop of the Keshe Foundation. And we'll be here today, uh, my name's Rick Kram, your host, and we'll be here today with uh, Mr. Keshe of the Keshe Foundation and talking with um, uh, various people from the Chinese um, sector who are interested in the Keshe work and are showing what they're doing with experiments with uh, CO2 GANs and uh, various other uh, experiments and questions that they'll have today. Okay, so let's move right along here. We've got lots to cover today and um, perhaps we can talk uh, with Mr. Kesh briefly there and move into uh, Lisa wants to show her experiment. Um, Mr. Kesh, are you there? Uh, I need to translate. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, uh, 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 对开始基金会的工作感兴趣的一些人然后可能会介绍一些关于实验方面的问题比如二氧化碳干思还有农业方面的问题今天有可能开始的时候会有丽莎就是我介绍一下我的实验然后还有开始先生会给我们解答问题
and uh, the other side, uh, you cannot see clear at the, the right side is a uh, uh, zinc. And I put a cup uh, with salt, salty water in the middle. I tried to get the gains from it, but I couldn't. And uh, the second one, I tried this method. Is, uh, this is figure 12. I put the plates in the zipper bags. And the, in the middle, the water is uh, salty water, but I couldn't get, get against either. And the third one also didn't get any gains. So this is my, these are my results. So I, th so I think is the, the gains sh probably will only create it on the copper coated plates. So I made, uh, I made a res uh, observation about how the gains uh, formed and then the next uh, uh, pictures uh, show the, how the gains are formed. Uh, the uh, figure one, can you see? Uh, figure one is the, I put uh, uh, about uh, like a um, couple of hours after I, I put the plates in and I can see the gains is formed uh, like around the plate and the layer just floating to the center. Uh, the next one is another, um, the next one, the figure two, uh, is uh, an, an, uh, this is the same time, it's just another direction. So you can see clearly is uh, the gains come off the uh, nano couple plates, plate. And uh, this is uh, like uh, four hours later, the, the figure three. So they all float away from the nanoplate to the center. Can see the shape, the shape. If you go compared to this one, it's uh, like a two around one. Uh, around is like a circle type on the right. And uh, there was a like a, a cone, cone type was on the left. So this one is they all move to the center. And this, okay, the uh, figure four is same as the figure three. It's just a little bit clear. And I made uh, another direction. I took a picture and I see that like it seems there's a field boundary in the center of the uh, water. It's like the gas moving away from the copper coated plate and the, at the, the some place in the center, no. they just uh, settle to the bottom. Yeah, I'm showing <laughs> figure five now and it shows that boundary yeah. that you talk about. And it almost yeah. looks like uh, the rib cage or vertebrae and rib cage of the human body. Yeah, it's like that. But the, the right side is it's a little bit lines, but not the gains. The gains is on the left line. Uh, they out from there and then they go down. They just uh, they will go downward, and then we will settle to the bottom, and then we will. <clears throat> So the, uh, okay, this is the, uh, the number of six, uh, figure six is, uh, this is not a uh, sequential with the others. This is a different one. I just uh, get another time, so I want to uh, take another look. So this is uh, another picture, it uh, shows the same. Also has a, uh, um, uh, when the gas moving to the towards the center, some point they just uh, falling down. And uh, I also do an 
experiment about the, okay, the, the figure seven. This time I put the uh, copper coated plate in the middle of the box. Uh, before was the last ones, they all hang on the side. So this one, I, I took a look, uh, the gas forms on the both sides. Uh, it's, um, okay, the f uh, figure seven is the, the side is away from the, uh, away, f uh, just face away from the zinc plate is, uh, okay, here is the side, uh, the wall of the, the container, so they are forming ganses here. And, uh, okay, the figure eight is more clear. So, and uh, on the figure nine, I, I showed the other side, okay. So it's uh, the side of facing the zinc. They also forming gas uh, from the plate and uh, like a floating and then will fall down. So these, those are my uh, pictures, observations. So uh, from my experiment, I, it seems like uh, the ganses are formed on the copper coated plates. So it, it's like the nano layers are the, it's like the process, uh, the process is uh, happened there. So, and also from my first three pictures shows that uh, if they are isolated, it, uh, uh, made the insulation, so there are no gains formed. So my, I want to, uh, Mr. Kaiser give us an exp explanation and um, because uh, I was, uh, this experiment, I was uh, thinking about that because I try to uh, get a pure gas, pure CO2 gas. So it's like I tried to isolate it several ways, but I couldn't get it, and then I made the last observation. So you managed to get your CO2 at the end? I, yeah, on the lows, yeah, a lot of CO2s on the bottom, lows, temperatures, lows. Are you there or have we lost it? Uh, I'm here. Yeah. I just uh, need to formulate a question. What, what specifically is your question, then, uh, Lisa? Do you um, have a question? My uh, question is, um, uh, like, uh, how the it's like uh, we have a, a, a salty water there. What's the uh, is uh, I mean, what's the role of the salty water? How? Uh, like each part for the electrodes and for the salty water and all in this creating gains, what are the individual roles in this one? Mm, just one second, I'm going to explain to you, you understand. Okay. Uh, Just one second, and uh, I will explain to you in a minute. Can we open okay. this one? Okay, uh, so you can open it in the background, or we can see. Uh, okay. 开始先生说等一下,然后我给你解释。然后我就说,我刚才是给这个开始先生就是描述了一下这个实验嘛。
啊，形成的，然后 seems like 好像是要就说飘会飘离出来，嗯，然后呢，我前面三个图片是我做的这个，就是用利用绝缘的办法，呃，想办法得到纯净的干丝，但是都没有。然后呢，我问开始的问题，那是说。啊、呃，就说，呃，我的这个，呃，比如盐水呀，还有纳米，呃 ，plate， 还有这个新板，就说这些都起了个什么作用，在这个形成干丝过程当中。Uh, ah. uh, please, uh, Mr. Cash. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. What it is, if you go back to your picture, the first picture where you saw the the elements uh, separating, the first separation, picture number one. Okay. 呃，开始说，让我们回到第一个图片，就是这种这种分离方式。呃，第一个 ，OK。Um, if you look at it, the first no, this is still picture further down. Go to picture one, the very first one, very first one. Okay, go over here. Stop there. If you look at this picture, you see that the CO2 or the or the gans starts from the plate. Coming out. At this stage, you create CO3, not CO2. What you see at this level is a CO3. If you have calcium in your water, this will join to with the calcium and become CaCO3. The reason this is CO3 is because CO3 is a um, in a structure, magrav structure, is very much in gravitational magnetic field, the same as copper. In magrav structure, you have three oxygens, which is 48, plus a carbon of 14, that gives you 62. CO uh, copper on its own is about 63. So the gravitational magnetic field in that position on the plate, near the plate, is near gravitational magnetic field of CO3, which is absorbed from the top. So the carbon comes down with the addition of the oxygen becomes CO3. Further, as it gets pulled in, it if the condition is correct, then you will see CO2 and the oxygen is released as a gas and that's sometimes you see gases on top of your plates, near your plates. So you release oxygen. This is how the plants release oxygen into the atmosphere when they absorb CO2. The condition of the nickel plate across allows the condition of the extraction or a condition that the gravitational magnetic field sits near the plate. You, I was explaining this yesterday to the knowledge seekers. Um, something which a lot of um, teaching has missed and is something to go in depth is that, first of all, we know that at that point, if you do a Raman spectroscopy and you take different um, ganses from different positions, the ganses near the plate are CO3CA or CaCO3, calcium, because most of the waters have calcium, so it becomes CaCO3. After the position that the, all the calcium atomic structure within the water are consumed for this process, then you start releasing the CO2 because oxygen will be then released as an additional element. So what happens? You have to go back into... Can you have a camera on this? Let me can just explain to you what it is. Yeah, it's, it's just one second. We put the camera on, then you, maybe we can explain it on the, on the live stream. 
the, can we see the picture? Can you show our picture? Uh, it is on. Yes, uh, it is on. It's just waiting for them to see it. Can you reset or try? Uh, can I translate first? Uh, well, uh, Rick is loading stop. the picture. We uh, yeah. It's reloaded. Are we back on? Yeah, we are reloaded now. Put it back on. Yes. Yeah, we, we did. We, that was ours. That was, uh, we switched it on. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. It's trying though. Uh, just give it a moment. Give it a kick. <laughs> Armand thinks he needs a plasmatic kick. Have you seen the picture? I can, I've got Vince, Vince has come through, so the video is working, but it's still having a hard time coming through in your end there. We are in, uh, in Italy, so... We always have to do everything in finesse. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, it, it didn't. Okay, try again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 okay. If you don't get it, we explain it. Oh, carry on, carry on. Sorry. Sorry, listen. Mm. Carry on translating. OK, uh, 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 CO3 呃，一开始的时候是CO3，然后呢，它会跟如果我们的水里边有钙的话，它会形成呃呃，就是CaCO3，嗯，这样，呃，所以呢，就是说，呃，等到就是说，呃，这个干丝网中间啊，移动的时
you do experiments uh, like you've shown, it allows us to add to the knowledge. If you look at the box of what you have, you have a... I have to go this way. You have a copper plate on one side, and you have a zinc plate on the other side. So, in this process, on the copper plate, you have a nano material, which means now you created a free magnetic field environment. That's what the uh, nano material is. So, in round this region, you created nanomagnetic feeling. But, there are something which is very important, we explained this yesterday here. One thing is, you have in this setup a copper. In this setup, you have a zinc. In this setup, you have the salt, you have the hydrogen, you have the oxygen, and whatever minerals are in the water you carry. So, the total gravitational magnetic field, balanced total gravitational magnetic field, of these elements in this environment, create a magnet, which is the gravitational magnetic field, somewhere in this area, which gets extended to, of CO2. So, what you create is a magnetic environmental area of CO2. That, as we showed it yet before, if these are magnets, you can see we added the plastic, the white one here. You can see it. we have a black one here, and we have another magnet. The only way that the CO2, carbon on its own, and oxygen, which is a common denominator between water and the air above, can be attracted, if, is, if you create the gravitational magnetic field of the CO2. So, what happened in this process, the, the car carbon and oxygen are free elements on the top, and when the gravitational magnetic field of the uh, water, environment of the water, becomes equal to CO2, the two merge and you get the CO2 in your system. Don't forget the structure. Similar magnetic gravitational fields attract or repulse. Iron is magnetic in the environment of this planet at the given present gravitational magnetic field and we detect it as magnet. And we call it a magnetic and we always associate with iron. As now we understand the gas structure, now we have learned to create in different environments that Whatever we need becomes magnetic environment. This is a change from matter to uh, creative condition of gravitational magnetic field. So, what happens is that in this environment, and you see the shape of it, the gravitational magnetic field in this environment is equal to CO2. But, initially, because of the strength of the gravitational magnetic field in this zone, you have the CO2. So, you have the release of, creation of, uh, absorption of CO3 near the plate. As they take shape, the first elements are matter. So, immediately they fall due to their mass, they fall to the bottom. And then, follows as the environment changes to a CO2 strength, now the CO2 in the process with the CO3 or on its own gaining mass falls to the bottom of the, uh, the, the container. So, when you put a copper on the other side, on, the, on this side, then you create a different gravitational magnetic field environment in this area, which is... Um, 
if you like it, is copper. By changing the plate from zinc to copper, you change the environment gravitational magnetic field. And in this process, because you create the gravitational magnetic field of the copper, then you find out that your copper layers, nanolayers, get released and then they become GANs. And at the same time, because they are plasmatic, they attach themselves to the oxygen. And then you get CuO, CO2 and what the rest. So, now, this is where the changes, and that's why you see the process of um, GANs production. And that's why you can try different elements, and so, from now on, we create an environment, a condition, that in this condition, the environment can be gravitational magnetic field of any element we like it to be. And now this is the process of research. Finding out what gives what element. That's why all of you use a zinc and copper, you get CO2 with the salt. You use uh, copper and copper, you get CO2. You use, uh, what do you call it, copper, uh, and copper and lead, you get different things. And then you let ends up with all sorts of uh, um, materials and gases. Because all you do, you create a, an environment in this section of the container that leads to creation of gravitational magnetic field of an entity, and if that entity is within the vicinity, will be attracted to the environment. So now you create a magnet of CO2, then you create a magnet of CO. Yesterday, here, going through the same subject, I explained, uh, Everyone is following the CO2 production or the plates and the salt. Has anybody tried salt and sugar? Or just sugar instead of the salt? So now we have experiments set up here on the table where we have a nano copper, yeah? Nano copper, copper. Nano copper, copper, zinc. Nano copper, copper and nano copper, zinc. Uh, one with sugar and one with sugar and salt. No, one with sugar and one with sugar and gans. Okay, one with sugar, sugar and salt. salt, and one sugar, sugar and gans. Sugar, gans, and salt. And salt. So, we, we, now we are trying to create a new environment to see what we get. We know what we are going to get from the environment of the, the creation of uh, CO2 through presence of uh, salt. And in this process, we get a CO2, which we all have done. But, by adding a factor of the sugar to it, we introduced a false CH bond, which is very much in the form of CH3, but composite, com much, much different uh, chemical chain of events. And now we want to see if the CO2, which we all have created, which has led to the creation of um, fat on the top. Armand has got his mixer in his hand, he's trying to do it. Once we finish, we will see the fat on the top that we all have seen that in the presence of the fat, amino acid on the top, in the presence of CO2 as a GANS, and in the presence of the CH3 or CH bond, whatever it could be, we can lead to creation of sustainable life. What this means is that now you have an amino acid, which has the oxygen bond and now has received the hydrogen bond as well. So, the gravitational magnetic field holds the two, the communication line holds there, and the CH3 or the sugar bond become the energy supplier through the centralization of the nanomaterial of, the, of um, 
uh, nitrogen. So the circle and the whole cycle of creation of life, sustain, sustaining it and replicating it, we have started today or yesterday. So we want to see an almond is ready with this mixer to be like a wind, uh, twisting the amino acid inside to mix with the CO2 and with the sugar, which leads to production and replication of life. Then in the, in the coming time, we add iron to it and then we add uh, copper oxide to it or magnesium and then we'll see how the color changes and then how we see the process. As I said, we gone into the next phase of the development and understanding. So, in fact, it's not just a copper plate, nano-coated, and a zinc plate, which extract or creates the environment of CO2. Because you have a liquid condition of the water, of the sodium, and on top of it, the chlor, which is part of the salt which is inside, plus if you have calcium, this totality of all these materials, elements, inside this containment, creates a CO2 gravitational magnetic field effect. That, in that process, allows the carbon to be extracted, and in being extracted and being in composition with the oxygen in the air to create a CO3 and in most of the cases connecting to any other element and after that is finished, you will see the production of CO2. In fact, if you observe all the materials at the bottom of your uh, bucket, you see like a bone structure, white, uh, like a flakes of white. These are all CaCO3 and this is kind of the composition of your own bone, which is connected to the calcium in the salt of the body of the man. So, if you see flakes at the bottom or pieces of uh, solid, this is a CaCO3 and we've seen this with Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy. So, that's the process. It's not how the elements are separated from the wall. The elements are separated because on the interface of the nano layer, you create a gravitational magnetic field, which a copper is 63, and then you have carbon plus three oxygen, which is 62. Near enough gravitational, taking into account all sorts of other matter elements inside, creates a magnet, which this magnet then creates the environment for a CO2, and that's how you extract CO2 from the environment. This is a new understanding of, by creating environment, you create magnetic fields, and not by having the elements, like iron only. So, you can create magnets for oxygen, you can create magnets for plutonium, you can create magnets for any element or composite in the universe. And this is how, if you understood this, this is how, you create condition of gravitational magnetic field of the destination and you get attracted or repelled to it. It's not just looking at it in the material production, you have to look at the totality of what it leads to. I was explaining this morning to, to the knowledge seekers, a very simple phenomenon. Uh, as I've said this before, we started with matter, showing you how to make the material, then we showed you how to create a control, now we showed you create of materials, then now you understand by creating and controlling them, you have your, your what do you call it, a uh, star formation, then now, up to now, you've learned the control, or you're trying to learn the control. You need to have the next step, which uh, then it gives you the ability to control, to fly, to find condition and produce uh, the, the lift or energy which you are looking for. In fact, if you look at the um, environment of the star formation and the free plasma, in that free plasma, what you are trying to do is to create exactly the condition you created in the center of the water. 
Here, you created the gravitational magnetic field of CO2, you attracted CO2. In your star formation in the free plasma, you try to create the environmental gravitational field of the planet or the Earth to be ex to repaired or attracted to. So, in a way, there is no difference between your water, water container and your star formation system. In the CO2 sets, you, it's a predetermined, it's been tested, so you achieve it. In the, uh, what you call, star formation, you are looking for that imaginary plasma. That, in respect to its environment, will dictate its position. Here, carbon and oxygen in the environment above the pot, were conditioned to the gravitational magnetic field of the carbon CO2, and then so it got attracted to it. So now you're trying now to be the gases above the container to be attracted by the Earth or be repelled by it. And thank you very much for such a clear pictures, because now you can explain it. I hope I was clear enough. Now you can translate. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you very much. You can <laughs> use, tell okay. me, I'll put my pictures up, I'll put the pictures up that you can explain. Okay? Okay. Um, uh, I uh, I will give a quick uh, uh, translate, and then later we will translate in detail. So, um, Kaiser先生给我们讲,他说,啊,这个照片呢,呃,是这样子的,他是说,啊,我们是现在有一个这个纳米的铜的这个板,这边是有个新板,然后呢,再加上这些个盐水呀,还有里面的矿物质,所有
呃，就是说讲了一下，那么中间呢是有一个自由等离子体，那么自由等离子体呢，你可以和啊、呃、其他的，就是说呃在磁场相匹配的情况下会排斥或者吸引。那么你如果造一个，就是说类似和地球磁场啊、呃、相匹配的，那么可以吸引地球，也可以排斥地球，就是说你就可以达到飞升和呃降落的目的，或者啊、呃、你就可以呃造物。呃呃，就先解释这么多吧，然后呃，因为时间也蛮紧的，我们看看再往下能不能进行其他的问题。嗯、um, ，OK， Miss Cash， 呃、uh, ，We have a request from Vince.、Uh, can we expound on the math of that list of materials you have on the screen for CO2? Or we can move to、um, Jan and his、uh, demo of the、uh, CO2 guns in gardening. Oh, I have I have another question. I、uh, it's not a question. It's um、uh, like a suggestion. Ah,、uh, when we have a,、uh, I was thinking because、uh, when we have a,、uh, uh, like a,、uh, using in the. Re- Actors, ah,、uh, we treated. Ah,、uh, you use gans to treating seeds. Ah,、uh, we need um, ah,、uh, we need ah,、uh, uh, like ah,、uh, how much gans we use, and I come up with this method. You can because the gans sometimes they get condensed. Ah,、uh, when you put in a bottle, and uh, after ah,、uh, like、uh, a month, it will like shrink to half of the volume. So if you say ten milliliters, ten mils of gas, sometimes it's maybe another time, maybe only half of it. So I'm thinking like maybe you can you shake the gas with the water, and then make make it homogeneous, and then you take like ten mils into the petri dish and let let it dry, so you can weight it. So in this case, you can get the concentration of the gains. It's like you weigh the petri dish、uh, first, and then you put like ten mils of the gains liquid into it, and then you dry it, and then you get the、uh, the solid part of the gains, and you get a weight. So you know the how much gains in those liquid. So in this way, you can get the percentage. It's like a a solution, as、uh, like a meta solution. So you can get a, a percentage. Otherwise, it's hard to say like a forty percent or twenty percent of gains.、Uh, understand? Did we lose Mr. Cash? I still see the video. Uh, I think his audio might be turned off.、Uh, I've been put on the silent、oh. without. They they silent me.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marco Marco moves around and just puts things on and off. So he decided I better be silent. <laughs> 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 so、uh, what it is as I was saying that、uh, I listened to what you said and it goes back to what we said some time ago, as the institute is.、Um, Getting established, and one of the first jobs that we will take up is setting up standards for measurements of、uh, all sorts of things. One is this measurement of、uh, the weight of the guns, the measurement of the、uh, magnetic field of different matters, that、um, scales for measuring magnetic gravitational fields.、Uh, these all be done, and what you suggested is part of that structure. We have to standardize that within 10 millimeter, how much uh, uh, what do you call it、uh, gas will exist or what it is, and then what you get a concentration of. <coughs> this is part of the process. We are we are pioneers in this, so we have to set the standard. And the institute is a good place, as an institute, to set the standard for the gas and measurements of all sorts of macrabs. 
Uh, the institute, by the way, it will be called, it's been registered at Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. So uh, we work on the DAP banner, so we set up the standards for measurements of the uh, gravitational magnetic field and uh, what they call space positioning. Okay, next question. Can we have, or do we have anything to do with the ants from the Chinese community? I do have um, a report on the ants. Uh, the, uh, the folks there aren't able to be on audio, but I've got a, a little report that I can give. Um, and, uh, okay, well, it goes... Maybe I'll show the, uh, the little ants video that we had before. Uh, let me just get it up here. There it is. Huh? And uh, and I'll do oh, it. Here's the report. Um, the report on the ants. Let's get it up here. Um, Soleil says, uh, for the ants, here are my observations. I did so far five tests with three different colonies. The ants show immediate interest. They touch and consume the gans. They do not die or get harmed. Also, every individual ant starts doing the same thing when coming in contact with the GANs. They start throwing all types of material which are available around them inside the containers of GANs until it's filled up completely. After the container is guarded by one ant at all times. And then they start consuming the material which has been... Um, which has been through inside little by little. All tests have been done with salt-free CO2 GANs. Also did tests colonies with container with just water in the container. Ants don't show the same behavior. The container will be left alone. So it wasn't the water, it's the GANs that they're interested in. Which is interesting. Let me, can, we, can we have soil online? Because there's a question to ask. Um, he's on the live stream. If he can uh, answer in the live stream, that could work. Or he, sa he said he was going to be on the live stream. I'm not clear if he actually is. Okay. Now, what is important, what is interesting to know is that if the ants consume the CO2 or consume the materials they put in the CO2 container. Well, they, he, does, he does say that they start consuming the material um, little by little. And they guard, so they, guard, they guard the container, so they must value it pretty, pretty much. I think what, what we need to know is that um, do they actually consume the, the CO2 and then when they finish consuming they have no more what I call uh, hunger for it, then they put the material to bury it and then they bury, they, they eat what is on top of it. Which means the GANS state releases the energy which they are expecting, or they, they, they look for. If you could have a full video of this, it would be very interesting. So the ants don't die, there is no changes in them. Sorry, that's what he says here. He says, uh, they have immediate interest, they do not die or get harmed. Um, and they guard the container when they, they uh, I'm not quite clear in what he says, they start throwing all types of material which are available around them inside the containers of GANs until it's filled up completely. I guess, like you're saying, they put the material on top of the GANs maybe to bury it. Uh, and then they start consuming the material. This is what I understand. Which they put on top of the guns. Maybe they put the yes, that does sound like that might be happening. I'm I'm not sure. 
what material. Um, I know they do have this sort of uh, jelly-like substance that they use for the um, uh, ants to live in. And maybe that's some of the stuff they're talking about. Okay, we need so I have to explain to us. Yes, we do. And I see that um, it's been asked in the chat if he's there, and apparently he's uh, not responding. So I think we're having uh, trouble with that. I, I know a guy who's done his thesis on ant, ant colonies. So we can put him to see and check. Uh, it is the behavior, uh, he's done a thesis on the behavior of ants, ant colonies. So I'll put him in touch with uh, Sohail. Yeah, it'll be okay, interesting to get more in Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, what's the next question? Well, we did have Ask a question <laughs> here that uh, gets a little involved, but... Oh, uh, I think we let her, let her bet uh, Lisa to translate. Yes, thank you. We forgot about that. Okay. Uh, 刚才开始先生问一下关于那个就是蚂蚁的那个试验然后呢瑞克就念了一下这个试验报告这个试验是由索海尔做的 安排吧，然后基本上可能就这些回来，呃，回头的话呢，我们再仔细再呃再呃把这个再翻译一下，因为下面马上要就是呃健康讲座了，所以我们基本上就是说呃可能今天就只能问这么多了。嗯，I was uh 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 saying that uh we almost time. To finish, so we, I will translate a more detail later. So okay, well, we have an hour or an hour and a half today. Well, uh, technically, we only have an hour um, unless uh, <laughs> we want to get into Elia's. Uh, uh, to um, let's let's go half an hour extra, and then we can go to Elia's because uh, the whole course we answered only one question, which was from. Lisa, but I think it was important to go into detail about it. That explains a lot of things about the whole work. That's the foundation of the work. What's this picture we see? Okay, um, can someone let uh, Elia know about that? That would be good. Uh, Amrock probably will. Okay, um, what we have here is uh, a question from she, uh, she what's the, how's it pronounced again? She, uh, she, she yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. She. It's, which says, until now, knowledge seekers have developed various kinds of reactors, but none of them have been able to lift. According to what Mr. Cash said in Knowledge Seeker Workshops, you will give the ignition key to governments, and governments will make the decision when and how to achieve lift. I have a question to ask whether the ignition key is the process of scintillation, as referred to in your patent. It is a controllable chain of energy transfers, and whether it could be completed in the following way. And then he uh, uh, has this picture of the um, what appears to be liquid helium on the left with an alpha beta source and uh, having that piped into a vacuum chamber with uh, hydrogen in the middle. This so, is already in the patent. Centralization is part of the pattern. We already explained that. But that is for the gas. But centralization is used for the gas to create the gas into the GAN state. It's not, GAN if we already have a GANs in a GAN state, we shouldn't need the nuclear aspect of things to kick-start it in terms we have to find a different way I think we talked about yeah. that on the last uh, workshop but does it turn the gas into a GAN state is that the purpose uh, of the scintillation let me, let me let me explain I was explain. somehow the questions are coming in a strange way we were discussing this this morning here on the table if you put the camera on we can show you in a minute where do I get the camera the whole process 
What are the papers from this morning? some you know one-to-one -one teachings here in sometimes because it's easier to do it um, this way I can explain it much easier um, this is from yesterday with a CO2 yeah, this is from the sodium combination yesterday today's big paper one of the papers is here it doesn't matter it's okay um, yeah. Okay, better. Okay. So what happened? Um, what we were trying to explain is there. It's the top page. The top page is part of it. It's the, uh, I have the rest of it here somewhere. Um, we are here with it. This is the process we are talking about. Um, what happened when you look at the centralization and um, hydrogen? The whole process, as we discussed in the last um, workshop, as we discussed in the last workshop, is very much yes, that's the one here. If you look at the whole structure of the work we've done up to now is to achieve atomic hydrogen of two. What this means, atomic hydrogen which has a proton and has a neutron with one electron, which this hydrogen is the most stable hydrogen you can, elements which you can ever find. The H with a single proton and an electron, in time, because the loss is different, the proton will become behaving like a nitrogen and it will divide. So, you get submatter elements. With the hydrogen, with one proton and one neutron, you have the stability of twinity. So, what happens is that in this process, you have an element which hardly ever divide, and depends on one condition you put on it, it will behave as a matter, as a gans, or as totally as a gas. But the whole three states in this case, because of the behavior of the hydrogen, tends up to be the behavior of gans, even if it shows itself as matter. In the process of your gas systems, where you have the Helium, what you have, if you look at it, you have two hydrogens of two. You have two neutrons and you have two protons, with each one carrying their own electron. So, the process of centralization is to create gas atomic structure or atomic hydrogen too. This is why you use GANS. This is why in the system, if you could able to look at the gas reactors which we have in the first lab, the center is still hollow, the same as what you see as the hollow balls in your course. Because now, the, the nano uh, state of hydrogen 2 is uh, in a cancer state 2.
So centralization we use in the gas state is to achieve the state of H2 that allows us to have the condition that we can deal with a stable element which in the long run you can make a combination of these H2s in a gas state that if you add them together you can have carbon, you can have um, oxygen, you can have any combination because these are of the same strength common denominator it's very easy to make matters with the base. How much of it do you want to add? If you have a copper and you want to make it into gold, you have to add and come into what you call the plasmatic fusion. But when you have a common denominator, the collective gravitational magnetic field of the same, because it's a single unit, will allow you to produce the behavior, gravitational magnetic field of any element you like in the universe that you lead to creation of the matter you want. That's why we do that in the gas, uh, gas reactors. We do the same back in the, what do you call it, as we said, uh, in, with the materials in respect to uh, Gans state too. So, all we do, as we saw in the first um, explanation that we created the environment of CO2, so we extracted CO2 from the environment. Now, we create environment, if you remember what I'm going to explain, the magnetic pressure, gravi magnetic gravitational plasmatic pressure. You create a conditional pressure that allows that the element you like is gravitational magnetic field, not by fusion, by, by cohesion to come into existence. Which means by their coming together, as they are plasmatic and is a single state, the interaction of the gravitational magnetic field gives the identity of the matter, so you can produce the matter by conversion or by attraction of the fields towards it. So you put the compression attraction of, let's say, copper in one corner of your pot, and then you start collecting fields which they collectively become that strength and you, copy, you collect your copper. If you go back into the explanation where I explained you have a three center cores and you put the three outer cores, in these cores you create this magnetic field. In a way, that's why we do centralization. Then you can create with the H2 the exact gravitational problem, magnetic field of any point of destination. It's very easy, it's very rapid. At the moment, most of the materials we have is composite. This, there is no composition, but it's a cohesion of the gravitational magnetic field, which gives the entity as one. This is why we in, in, the, in the gas field reactors. In the very near future, when we set up the institute, you will meet a um, scientist who's specialized with this. He has achieved levitation through the same process, but through um, sodium and mercury. And now he has seen what we do, and he says now he found a way to do it. And he's joining us, he's a, he's a professor, he's a doctor. He's joining the Foundation uh, to teach how you can use the materials, because he's done the 30,000 RPM, into a small rotation and you can achieve more lift and motion. Um, you, the whole purpose of the centralization was to create the atomic hydrogen too. But in a, in a cancer state, we need to access it directly and that's, um, that's part of the structure. You want to translate? Uh, okay, probably don't have time to translate. Just a, a 
uh, roughly translate a little bit. Ah, um, this is Mr. Xianzheng asking the question. Is, ah, everyone can go to what? Is on our conference. He has a picture with the question. Is about the reaction of our response. He has never been able to fly. 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 He has never been 呃，这个词怎么翻啊？不知道啊，就说要类似于离子化的这种，然后开始说我们这个气体的反应气做呢，实际上是要得到，啊呃,呃刀，就是氢二，因为氢二的话表现呢可以是呃干丝呃哦那个、是点火装置，就是说可以表现为干丝，也可以表现为就是这种原子结构，也可以表现为物质。啊、呃，所以说这个氢二的话呢是很重要的，啊、呃，然后呢，呃，后来又讲到说可能有一个啊、呃、博士的话，他原来用其他的元素达到这种啊、呃、效果，现在呢，呃，他可能马上会加入到基金会，可能会呃，就是说呃，做一个系统完成飞升。嗯，呃，基本上就是这样子的，所以，呃，开始今天强调了一个这个，呃，氢二的话呢，就是它，呃，不叫氢了，就是我们的刀，呃，是一个特别呃重要的金属元素，呃，我猜想是，就是说，呃，上次讲座里提到这一个元素可以造任何物质，应该是这个，呃，刀。Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Cash, so this is um, H2 uh, is the element you, you were talking about the last workshop. Because last workshop you said uh, one element, you can use it to create anything you want. Is this element? Can't hear you, Mr. Kesh. Their sounds off. I think. I was controlling him. Uh, I was putting the microphone on off. Yeah. Yes. This uh, you are correct. Um, this is what we call deuterium, uh, but I call it H2 because uh, it, it's uh, straight away it means it has a proton and electron. Uh, the whole structure is uh, stable, and you can use it for any purpose in the universe. And that's what we explained last week. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I tell you something. We're just talking to Armin. He said it is spooky. We spoke about two things, and there are two questions coming on the table in what we spoke yesterday and today. And I said, you don't know what I know. I know what's the next question too, but uh, we can carry on. <laughs> Because <laughs> we, okay. we, we got all the teaching papers of yesterday and today in front of us, <laughs> and even now, if you see it all, this is the this is the uh, if you can see the picture. Uh, I don't know if it's available to you. Um, can you see the picture on the table? I uh, yes. Yeah, if you look at it, this is the um, this is the H two, which we were talking about. You can see this is the discussion of this morning, and um, uh, the discussion of yesterday was, as you, we showed you some papers, was about the creation of the what do you call it, uh, CO2 in the atom. These are so it's a it's not, it's not coincidence. These are the teaching of the yesterday, and we were talking about uh, exactly what you asked. You can see the picture of the CO2 and how it's created and uh, creation of, as I explained to you, the zinc, the sodium and oxygen in the container. So we already knew what questions you're going to have today on the table and it was discussed here. So we had a, we had a rehearsal. <laughs> Do you want to announce the next question then? <laughs> then it becomes very spooky. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a spooky question here, if we want to bring that one up. But um, uh, I want to also acknowledge Jan, because he uh, has this presentation he'd like to do. But we've only got maybe 15 minutes left, so how do you think we should okay, proceed? Let him do it. Let him proceed. Let him see, and then we start at 3.30 with uh, Elia. Can we go and...
Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, about the, um, let me see. What is the next one, please? Uh, uh, okay, we've got the uh, experiment number one with CO2 GANs, right? Is that what you want, Lisa? Uh, yeah. And we can get... Uh, is, uh, let me see. Can... Let me see. Experiment. Okay. Yeah, uh, show the... Let me see. Sure. Uh, should be okay. The other one. Um, experiment two. Show that picture. Okay. I I need to check. Uh, what's in there? Yeah. Just a second here. Just have to get that one yeah. up. Okay, it's coming up on live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, I can explain first. Um, uh, Ms. Yen did uh, some uh, uh, CO2 GANS treatment for the strawberry seeds. And uh, the seeds come, uh, they uh, treated uh, two methods. One is uh, uh, use GANS treated first, uh, just, uh, <laughs> And then he used um, to light it uh, in outside to give a cold treatment. So break the dormancy. And another one, he uh, so uh, when he uh, bring back the seeds, put it in the uh, to let it germinate. Uh, he found some uh, seeds was um has uh, germs on it, so he want to uh use he treated with gans again and uh, so the germs still. Oh, uh, the second day the germs appears again. So he want to know uh, why. Whether the gains cannot kill the germs. Depends, I think, what gans he uses. Huh? Uh, he uses CO2. Ask him to use the copper oxide. Okay, thank you. And let us know, because when you have a stronger field, it's mm -hmm. very much like a cancer, because the, uh, the, what do you call, the magnetic gravitational field of the stronger, will mm -hmm. um, extract the energy from it. This is one of the processes we use uh, for different uh, cases. And uh, for those uh, who, because Armin just walked in with something and he said, can I use this? Uh, this goes back to the what we talked about, or uh, Mar uh, Rick and uh, Wins in the workshop last week, how to make a gravitational magnetic pumps pressure, that you can increase the pressure on your uh, what do you call it on on the tubes or on your um, cores. Mm -hmm. The only way you can create motion, circulation, and compression on the GANs is when you use a higher strength gravitational magnetic field. Which means, uh, it very much, if you understand the blood pressure, it works the same way. Uh, the, the, what you call a blood pressure, is exactly what the scientists look for, are now our knowledge seekers, look for how to create plasmatic pressure that it can convert one matter to another. So, um, the same goes with the state of the, the, the germ. Germ is a composite, so he has to find a gravitational magnetic field. Uh, the reason... 
your CO2 disappeared or the germ disappeared and appeared again, your CO2 became the food like for the ants. So the transition point, you don't see and it comes back again. So you have to create a gravitational magnetic field environment for the germ, that the germ becomes the food, not your CO2. And if you understand this process, then uh, everything okay, is, it's, uh, it's, what do you call it? It's um, eradicable, you can eradicate everything. You don't need to, to use bacteria or whatever. You just uh, wash your material with a higher strength or pass it through the higher strength, and what you don't want will be absorbed by it or become the food of the energy part of it, or get attracted to in the case of the GANs. So you remove it. Ask him to use a CH, because if it's a bacteria, or it has a, what do you call, amino acid bond, then uh, the amino acid bond, you have a 14, 16, 12 and 1. So that's 30, that's 43. So if he uses a copper oxide, he passes, uh, the strength is higher than the, the whatever could be the combination of the amino acid of the, what do you call it, the bacteria or the whatever fungus. But CO2 is much lower, so CO2 is, it's, uh, it literally can, is getting eaten up, so the power is higher than, what do you call it, CO2. CO2 is 44. So, uh, it's not strong enough to uh, eat up or absorb energy from. So, you need to use a copper oxide, which is 63 plus another 32, which is around about 95 then you can extract, you can, you don't extract, you take energy from the, what do you call it, the bonding of the bacteria, and you, you let us know the result. You want to translate? Yeah, okay. Uh应该可以说话吧，他在这里。哎，我在大姐，还有一个问题就是说，那个浓度的问题啊，就是不同的干丝溶液的浓度是否对于这个种子浸泡时的影响不大，而跟浸泡时间有关系。比如说不同不同浓
And that's what happens. That's why time is a factor, because it's a magnetic field growth or conversion. And then, because it's a CO2 and you have a C, we explained the paper, I think it's already complete, it should be done by, by the foundation, it will be released, the agricultural paper. And uh, you see in there, time, there is a time, soaking time has a factor. And the reason for it is, the CO2 is magnetic field matter, and the matter or the skin of the, or the material of the seed, carry protein bond. Doesn't matter what they are, they have some sort of protein, but they have a magnetic field uh, connection. And this uh, CO2 penetrates deeper and deeper, in a way, makes a nano layer internally in the seed. And then, as you convert matter into the GANS nano layer, now the information will change to, the, to, to lead to the um, mutation of the seed is not there anymore. So, the seed can only grow till the layer where the mutation has, been, has not been touched. So, if you leave the seed long enough, you go to the point of the grass. So, the wheat becomes, because you cannot go any further to touch this origin. And that's why, if you remember with all my talk in past few weeks, we say uh, goodbye to all the work which uh, Monsanto has done. Because all you do, Monsanto has changed the outer layer, the latest cycle of life of the seed. With nano GANS material which you put in, you, you neutralize that point. So, the mutation which has been put on to control is, is gone. That's why the timing is essential. It depends how much you seed, depends on the strength of the compactness of the seed, or how soft the seed is. The softer the seed, the less time to reach the point of uh, balance or the origin. If, he, if they leave the seed, let's say, for a week or so in the GANS, and then plant it, and most probably we see the original strawberry ever created at the origin, which became the, the mutation which has, led, you know, has led us to the present uh, uh, strawberry, which is using. Do you want to translate? Yes, okay. Uh, uh, 开始先生才给你解释了一下, uh, 这个, uh, 就是说, uh, 这个是确实是时间, uh, 比较重要, 然后因为是你这个做处理的时候, 实际上是,是就是说你这个溶液会往里走嘛, 然后就会处理不同的纳米层, 然后就会把它都变成物质, 然后呢, 就说你时间长的话, 就会进入到里边, 会改变的更多, 如果最外边的话, 会改变的少, 所以跟时间有关。然后就说这样的话呢,如果你要是处理一下的话呢,会把孟山都的这个,就说给处理掉,因为它只是改了最外面。基本上可能就这样，因为我们延长了半小时啊。开始先生说希望我们这个能延长嘛，所以后来呃跟那个呃瑞克他们还有阿姆拉克讨论，决定延长了半小时，所以我们现在进行到呃十点半。嗯，O
And so ends the Chinese Knowledge Seekers Workshop for today. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Uh, 感谢大家。再见。